Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.2.1 has been out for a few days and iOS 17.3 beta one has been out for over a week. I've used both full time on different devices so I could share the overall experience, battery life and more, and not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll. We're at the time of this video, there's over 28,000 votes, which is incredible and 247 comments. I've read all of those comments to determine what the overall experience is like. So we'll talk about that as well as some new features since the iOS 17.3 beta one is out what's new video and 17.2.1 is out what's new video. Apple has resolved a major issue. Now, the first thing though, I wanted to talk about is a few things with Apple news with the Apple watch series nine and Apple watch ultra two currently at the time of this video, it's no longer for sale on Apple's website. So if we go to Apple's website here, if we go to the Apple watch section, we'll see SE Apple watch series nine, which says currently unavailable and Apple watch ultra two is currently unavailable. They're unavailable to order online in the United States due to a ban temporarily. Hopefully it's temporarily. And also starting after the 24th of December, you won't be able to buy them in the store. So if you want them as a last minute gift, you can pick them up in the United States at the Apple store and some other stores as well. On top of this, there's also an issue with warranty repairs. If you have an Apple watch with an O2 sensor, Apple cannot repair it. If it's out of warranty due to this ban as well, this means series six and newer with the O2 sensor in it, since that's where the patent dispute lies. If it has an O2 sensor in it and it's out of warranty, Apple won't be able to fix it. Hopefully they resolve this issue very quickly as it's a bit of a pain, not just for Apple, but also customers as well. And they can work that out with the company that's actually causing the issues for them that may rightfully own the actual patents to it, but that's for the courts to decide. Also Apple's infinite loop store. This is at their original headquarters will be shutting down January 20th. That's a bit of a shame as it offered some specific merchandise there that you won't be able to get any longer. Of course they have the Apple park store at their main spaceship campus, but this is sort of a vintage one that they're closing down. Now beeper mini is one of those apps that we keep hearing about because it was trying to use iMessage, but on Android, the app is still live and they keep fighting to get it to work properly. However, now they're sort of in the last ditch effort as Apple's kind of shut them down altogether. And now you actually need to have a Mac in order to get it to work a Mac on your own network, but it's sort of a workaround for now. So it looks like it's not really something that's viable, but it is getting the attention of a lot of different senators and other people in the United States where they probably will investigate it and they may force Apple to open up iMessage. We'll have to see what they do there. Apple's self-service repair has been updated again. So it now works on your iPhone. If you want to run hardware diagnostics, this is sort of something you can put it into a mode and then run diagnostics from a different device and sort of test different things, whether your display is bad and other things as well. If you'd like a separate video on that, showing you how that works exactly, let me know in the comments below. Now, as far as new features this week, iOS 17.2.1 resolves a major issue many were having. It fixes battery life drain. Now, initially I actually complained on Twitter or X that Apple is not giving enough detail with their notes in the United States. If we go back and look at 17.2.1, it just says the update provides important bug fixes and is recommended for all users. Thanks to a viewer. You'll see here where I said, when Apple says an update has important bug fixes, they need to specify which one. So users can verify thanks to June, June DM. He actually said it fixed an issue where battery drained faster than expected in some cases. So right after I posted this, he actually responded and you can see this here where they say what it was. Now this seems to have only shown up in Japan and China for some reason, Apple really needs to consolidate everything and make it available everywhere. Also, this could contain an issue to fix issues with apps, not being able to be reinstalled that are Apple apps. So maybe you delete the mail app and you weren't able to reinstall it iOS 16.7.4 actually resolved that that may be in this update. Apple hasn't said I haven't seen it posted elsewhere, but at least it's one thing they pushed out. So we're not really sure as far as that goes. Now, as far as new features, one thing I wanted to mention is with iOS 17.2, quite a few people were disappointed with the TV app that they got rid of the wish list with iTunes. So if you haven't updated yet, maybe you're on an older version and you use the wish list all the time, you may want to move that information into someplace else. So you can reference back to it as Apple has done completely away with it. Unfortunately, now on your USB C port on the latest iPhones, if you actually get water in this, you'll get a warning. That's nothing new, but apparently the tone is a little bit new. And 
and plays continuously until it's actually dried out. That's a bit annoying, but at least it lets you know that there's a problem. So if you've had that issue, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, but I've seen this posted online. One other thing worth noting is with iOS 17.2 and emoji seem to work on non face ID phones, such as the iPhone SE. So if you go into maybe your messages and then you have emoji active, you can look at the screen and it will move around and sort of sense what you're doing. Apparently it works just fine on iPhone SE if you're using iOS 17.2 now. So that's a new feature that's working properly. Also the new emoji reactions in music are very buggy. Now that's on iOS 17.3 beta one. So this phone here, the blue titanium one has iOS 17.3. And if you go into your playlist that you've got collaborative playlists with, We'll go into my test playlist. If you see these emojis here, or animated emojis, we can tap. Sometimes they work properly. Sometimes they don't, you can't easily change them. You'll see it change there, but didn't reanimate. And if we go back into it, you'll see it here, but it doesn't actually show anything as far as the animations. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And other people see it react differently as well. Let me know if you're having that issue also. Also an odd issue I've seen on iOS 17.3 already is sometimes when you go to search, it doesn't find anything. So sometimes you'll just search for something. It finds nothing. That's true across Mac OS, at least for me as well. Now this week we had iOS 17.2.1, iOS 16.7.4, but we also had an AirPods update just for AirPods three, for some reason, bringing it to version six, a three, one, seven. And if we go onto Apple's website, you'll see here where the latest firmware you'll see it here for AirPods three, six, a three, one, seven. And according to them, it has bug fixes and other improvements. Again, another vague update. They really need to specify what they're fixing as it really doesn't help anyone, including themselves. If no one can verify that they've actually fixed the bugs that people were having. Also, let's see if mine updated on their own just yet. So we'll go into our settings, scroll down and mine haven't updated yet. So if you're having issues with connectivity with your AirPods or anything else, make sure you're on the latest version with AirPods three or any of the others. I'll link the website with all of the latest versions in the description below. So you can check it out and make sure you're on the latest version as well. Apple also released a new Safari technology preview. If we download, you'll see here we have version 185 released on December 20th. So that's available now if you're testing against those different technologies on Mac OS Ventura or Mac OS Sonoma. Also, we have a new Final Cut Pro version that I actually posted on X or Twitter. You'll see this is the latest update and it's a pretty small one here with 10.7.1 where it improves stability on Intel based Mac models when using color wheels or color curves on H.264 video clips. It also fixes an issue with some default keyboard shortcuts working incorrectly on non English keyboards. So if you were having those issues on Intel Macs or any of the keyboard shortcut issues, those should be resolved now. Now, as far as the next updates, well, we are expecting iOS 17.3 beta two, but not until usually the second week of January. That's what Apple typically does with these releases. Although we had that surprise release this past week. So if they need to push something else, we could see that. So maybe around the 10th, that's what Apple did last year, the ninth or 10th, we'll see that update. And then a final release typically at the end of January or early February. We are expecting Apple vision pro sometime around the end of January or early February. So expect it around that same time frame with vision OS. Also, we're expecting watch OS 10.2.1 or possibly some other update to hopefully resolve this issue Apple's having, but I don't want them to remove features as well. They really should just resolve that issue altogether with the company. So hopefully they get that taken care of and this will be long forgotten at some point. Now, as far as iOS 17.2.1 and what it's fixed in the remaining bugs, well, the Wi-Fi issue seems to be fixed by many, but a few people said they still have issues with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It seems to be very hit or miss, but the people I've talked to that have had that issue, if they go into settings, go to general, go down to transfer or reset iPhone, then reset and they reset your network settings that typically resolves those issues. Now I wouldn't recommend this if you don't have your passwords as this will wipe out most of your passwords if they're not saved for your Wi-Fi networks and different things you're connected to wirelessly. But if you do have those and you want to see if it works, you can try that as many people say it seems to fix it. Of course, it seems to fix the battery. We'll talk about that a little bit later with some of your comments and show you my battery life. Then of course we have some other issues as well with notifications. Apple doesn't seem to probably ever want to fix this. It seems for some reason, it's just kind of jumping all over the place still. And also the wallpaper dimming bug is there on iOS 17.3 and 17.2.1. So you can see that here.
If we go over to iOS 17.3 beta one, well, the same usual bugs are still there. No improvement, but nothing is worse at this point. Airdrop seems to work okay most of the time, but sometimes doesn't find other devices. And of course we have the notification wallpaper dimming bug. So the same bugs exist here as well for whatever reason, but most of the time it seems to be pretty stable and camera improvements seem to be something Apple continues to be working on. So here's a few different photos to give you an idea of what it's capable of. See between 17.3 and 17.2.1. So let me know if you noticed any camera improvements in the comments below. Now, as far as the overall performance, both seem to perform quite well. In fact, many people said that iOS 17.2.1 was actually performing quite well on their older devices, even where it would stutter with 17.2. They're saying it's smoother with 17.2.1. I really haven't seen many comments about people having performance issues. And most of the time it's staying cool with the exception of one group of people I saw that said they have an issue with it. So most people are finding that it's staying nice and cool. It's performing as you would expect going into different apps, ProMotion scrolling up and down. Everything seems to be as you would expect, but as far as the overall temperature, well, let's go ahead and take a look between the two devices running different versions. And at the hottest point on iOS 17.2.1, we have about 82 and a half degrees Fahrenheit, maybe 83 degrees in the hottest point. On 17.3 beta one, it's a little bit cooler as I haven't been holding on to it, but again, around 81 degrees. And on 17.2.1, we have about 29 degrees Celsius. And on 17.3, we have about 27.5 degrees Celsius. So overall, they're staying pretty cool. No issues there. I haven't really had any issues. If you have them in a case that's completely sealed and having issues, well, then you may want to consider removing it. Otherwise they seem to be doing quite well and they're cool to the touch to pick up as well. Now, as far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a quick look at those. We'll run them right now, see what we get. And hopefully it's a little bit better than it was the other day. It was still quite good either way, but let's go ahead and see if it's improved. Benchmarks completed. And as you can see on the right, we have iOS 17.2.1 with a higher score than iOS 17.3 on the left. We have 2,951 for single core compared to 2,939. For multi-core, we have 7,418 compared to 7,260. So a little bit of a bump there. Basically you're going to experience similar performance, but this gives you an idea of what to expect. Both very good scores though. As far as battery life, let's take a look at the cycle counts on both of them. And then we'll talk about each one individually since I've used them full time. So if we go into general and then about, unfortunately we don't have the cycle count on older devices yet, but you can see here from coconut battery and on the right, we have nine cycles and on the left 76 that's because I've used both full time, but of course only 17.3 on the blue titanium a little bit more. Now, if we go and take a look at battery health, Take a look here, battery health and charging. We have a hundred percent on both. I expect the blue titanium one to drop down pretty quickly though to 99. Now, as far as battery life, well, iOS 17.2.1 has been significantly better than 17.3 beta one for me. So here's a full day of use pretty much a hundred percent on this one, about a hundred percent yesterday. So we had five hours and 40 minutes of screen active time on 17.2.1, two hours and 43 minutes of screen idle time today, though, I have four hours and 32 minutes of screen active time, and I've only used 50% of my battery or about 60% at this point. And then I have four hours and 32 minutes of screen idle time. So I'm getting significantly better battery life. Again, you'll see two hours and 59 minutes on iOS 17.3 beta one for me, much better battery life overall with the exact same settings on both phones, basically one was restored to the other. Some of the apps may be arranged a little bit differently, but pretty much the exact same thing. Now, as far as if you should install either one of these updates, well, if the public version is the one you're currently on, I would definitely install iOS 17.2.1, not just to fix your battery issue, but also security updates as well. I would hold off on the beta for now because we won't have beta two for a few weeks. So typically, unless you have an extra phone, I would hold off on that. I'm going to use the regular one full time until the next beta has come out. Probably that's basically because I want something stable over the holidays and want to make sure everything's running fine. Now, as far as the overall comments, let's take a look at what you had to say. Google 23 said running iOS 17.2.1 on my iPhone 14 plus no issues and battery is phenomenal. 
but the same bug with the auto brightness where adjusting it myself occurs the same glitch as the previous version. Hope that they resolve this on the next update. Performance wise is great. Grady Schwartz 6628 said, I've been running iOS 17.2.1 on my iPhone 15 pro battery life is much better from iOS 17.3 and seems to have resolved the Wi-Fi issue for my phone. Hopefully things will continue to get better. I'm hoping for a redesign with iOS 18. Ionis service 2471 says, hello, Aaron, I'm using iOS 17.2.1 one on my iPhone 15 pro max. And so far I'm not having issues. I noticed that I have better battery life. Even when I play demanding games on my iPhone, I'm on 100% battery health with 50 cycles. Performance seems to be about the same. The notification bug is still present here. And I don't even know if it counts as a bug anymore. Danny O three, two zero seven says battery was horrid on 17.2, but 17.2.1 seems to be much better on my iPhone 12 mini. It's much more noticeable on a small phone when every percent counts. Mr. Austin felt said I'm running iOS 17.2.1 on my iPhone 13 mini and I'm not having any issues. Battery is fantastic. Performance is smooth. And I love your content so much, Aaron, keep it up. Thank you. Sumit Bardwaj says I'm on 17.2.1 on both my 15 plus and 13 and battery life is okay. I believe. However, since 17.2, I am also having issues with Wi-Fi. It's connected all the time, but sometimes for strange reasons, it stops transmitting data or becomes extremely slow. Same activity, browsing, etc. on my Mac connected to the same network works fine. This happens randomly and many times emails and chat messages are being delayed. So I feel this is serious and Apple should look into it. I have also reported it during public betas. So that's everything with iOS 17.2.1 and iOS 17.3 beta one so far. Now we should sort of slow down a little bit as we have the holidays with Christmas and new years, and then Apple will get back to work with beta two Apple vision pro and anything else they have planned for this year. Let me know if you've found any additional features or noticed anything with the latest updates in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.